Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Old World Blues, a 5.0 early access update, Ashes to Embers, and I'm your host Mr. Mocha Lover. Thank you to the devs for giving me early access of course, as we're playing as the Metis Congress and their unique focus tree led by Antoine Beausoleil, which I'm probably sure I'm saying wrong. I'll also let you know the update for this uh, 5.0. Ashes to Embers update will be released on February 28th, 2024, but our revolution. We've always had our land and our people. We've only had our own destiny for brief moments in time. The children of the first to have bled for our future are now being putting their lives on the line. All for the same dream that has been dreamt for centuries. Our revolution. Even before the invasion of Canada, the people who lived in and around the Kachev yearned for independence. But even after nuclear devastation ravaged the world, not much changed for the Canadian Great Plains, as they were so ruled by an angloid from the east. Soon, the Metis would find opportunity to once again spill blood for the people's dreams. This opportunity would come in the form of merchant unrest in the eastern frontier of the kingdom. And as the weapons began flowing to the revolutionary councils in Regina from the benefactors to the north and east, it became very clear exactly where the soon-to-be republic would fall in the coming struggles. With the rise of nationalist activity, so too rose police activity from the kingdom's loyal hound dogs. Arrests for swamp clearing and penal labor became rampant and martial law became the norm for those in the urban centers. When the royal military police departed north to begin frontier penal reclamation, Antoine was informed of the merchant's rise in the east, so he ordered his cells to strike and by the end of the day the military police were stranded north of the catch and the militia had seized control of the western reaches of the Metis' land. Which I'm sure I'm saying wrong. Metis land? Metis? And then coming days would be decided whether true democracy for the Metis would have to wait until the nascent revolution was solidified. This disagreement led to the formation of two impromptu parties, the Constitutionalists, who believed in an immediate democracy was the only way to prevent the rise of a populist dictator, and the Confederationalists, headed by the army, who argued that the speed bumps during the beginning of moments of their independence would lead to the loss of said independence. We cannot give dictators time to rise. The Constitutionalists gain power. Look at robots. Versus the revolution doesn't have time for laws. Ooh, more attack. You, do we want to be more offensive here, or do we want more robots? That's a good question. Nation building. It is not enough to be an independent people. We must also be an efficient one. Efficient in war and efficient in peace. How will our people have a future if our nation collapses the moment after its birth? So we have disgruntled military versus resistance from the constitutionalists. Raised deployment pay. Ooh, that's not bad. More attack. Increased congressional guards. Citizenship for soldiers. Farmer shortage. Way more political power and recruitable population. Harvesting, ooh, less population though. Proud to serve, worker production, battalions, it was more recruitable population. With a population boom from recently acquired territories, we can finally enter rampant overemployment. Paying them off. Promote heroes of the revolution. Military restructuring. Oh. Ohm's Law. New tactics for new generation. Interesting. A league of our own. Rekindle our commitments. Create our own coalition. This goes to war with the unbound. War support, political power. Because although there's quite a few different ways we can go here. Permanent reduction costs and at the Duchy of Langenberg. Defenders of a free Canada. Very uh, democratic. But the throw around our weight. Invade. Huh. Eliminate the glowing terrors. That's cool. Unbound. Vest in Fort Peck, Republic's National Army, and Last Vestige of Democracy. So that's a democratic route. Choose federal intervention. Modernize our stance. Versus this route, choose our national heroes. And teachings of Louis Real. Open our borders, expansive definition of Metis. Support New World Tribes. Medicine line policy. More political power, what you do like. Gabriel Institute of Learning, more stability. Place of previously gained ideas with a single more powerful idea. Metis, Metis of the real world. Modern world. Actions of Gabriel Dumont. Close definitions. Population. Lose non-core manpower. Lose a lot of political power. The foundations of a given civilization. Interesting. Forged in fire. Lose political power and non-core manpower. Be better recruitable population, though. Restrain the unbound. State of Moose Jaw. End the assimilation. War goal, local reduction coring costs along the South Saskatchewan River, unity in the face of tyranny. Ooh, face down the electorate. Congress of Manitoba versus revoke the Manitoba Act. Huh. Get cores here too. Clear the riffraff. Known as a Red River Republic. Honestly, I have no idea. What is this? Legacy of the North American Fur Trade. 
Uh, can you get another research slot? Because we're pretty much average in everything. We have four research slots. And... Move diminished for yields. Oh, that would be good to do. Expert navigators is not bad. Okay. Well, honestly, it doesn't really matter. Constitutionalists. Can you go robots? I mean, look at our tech here. Reward technologies. We have average robots. No, actually, no, we're not even not an average. We're really bad. Hold on. Is there stuff here for robots? Because I don't mind using robots if we can get to them. No? Okay, so we got nothing here for robots. Support robot, command, and control robots. The revolution doesn't have time for laws. Okay, then. And everything else seems pretty normal. But I'm sorry for taking so long for that. But uh, development funds from three rivers. The western provinces of the kingdom have never been well developed or utilized, which has left much of our nation stuck in a rut. Luckily, by burning a few bridges out east, we can lobby for some economic aid from our brothers in arms. Fantastic. The building of a nation. As our boys in the field fought against the kingdom's lapdogs, the people of Regina hashed out what centuries of effort would have culminated into. Whether a republic would have a strong central head or if power should be decentralized to the people or the senate of peoples, the confederalists argue that the recent success of the military, a single powerful president with a cabinet of officers from high command would serve the republic in both war and peace. The constitutionalists, however, pointed to these same victories as to why the military is perfectly fine even without more power inside the government. These debates would rage for weeks as both party leaders, Antoine and Etienne, uh, Etienne are fighting off Yorkton for control of the catch or arguing Three Rivers merchant leaders for more weapons and aid, respectively. We cannot allow the military to trample over the democracy. Hey, more daily political power gains, good stability, ideology, direct defense. The momentum of change must accelerate. Confederation wants to get power. Um, that's not bad. I like the army experience gain. That's quite good, but this seems better for me. I want more political power. And Congress is in session. Congress is in session as much as such battle and foreign diplomacy are given way to uh, debate and deliberation. Although the votes are tallied months ago, now is a true test to see whether the representatives will carry the will of the people or give way to corruption. Severance pay. Etienne has recently returned from the trans Colna with good news and bad news. His attempts to secure funding from the Three Rivers has proven successful. They have approved funding to stabilize their industrial base, but Etienne isn't the most subtle of diplomats and has slowed a reputation within the Republic. These approved factories would be a monumental boost to our people's standards of living, making our fight for survival more legitimate in the eyes of many in the most hardline naysayers. Sadly, Antoine has returned as well, with even worse news. His attempts to cross the catch have proven disastrous, with much of his army being wiped out with Yorkton. This loss has allowed the military police in Yorkton to regroup, and they've begun marching on Regina. Antoine under claims that he must command, commandeer the funds to rebuild the army and save the Republic. And while his loss is undeniable, whether the threat is as great as he claims is entirely unknown, after all. This could be an attempt to ruin Etienne's public image and placate a warhawk a high command. The public outcry would be catastrophic. Ooh, the fate of the Republic is on the line. Arms workshops would be very, very nice. We actually have a decent amount of stuff here, so... As much as I want them. Uh, we're going to go with the Confederationists, and probably going to maybe bounce it out, and then with this one we're going to go with the Constitutionalists and see what happens. Because I have no idea. Congress is in session, for better or for worse. Sentiments and grudges from the tumultuous beginning of the Republic still their effects echoed today's congressional meetings. And although the military has led the country since the revolution, it hasn't been through a junta. Our people have decided that it was a sacrifice that needed to be made, and now the crisis seeming to come to an end, the people must decide once more whether the mandate of rule is a gift to give to the army. Our liberty, liberty has yet to be secured. The once noble opposition has been uh, corrupted by enemies and detractors to nothing more than thinly veiled insurrectionist movements. They pretend to engage in civil debate and feign interest in cooperation, but all the while they obstruct military funding with their proceduralism and seek to loosen the grip of generals over their men. They cannot be trusted by any, any, under any circumstance. Uh, the tide of the voting age to the age draft. As it stands, we begin. We have people who voting in who, in times of great strife, wouldn't be called to defend the republic. This cannot be allowed to continue. What's worse is the fact that these young voters tend to support a radical and subversive organization. Bully the opposition. The only communication these people understand is that of steel muscle. If they want to destroy the nation, they'll have to do so in quiet as to avoid brutal beatdowns. Alright. And we start with multiculturalism. The Meta's mixed ancestry, mostly that of the French and Cree, provides them with much greater diplomatic capabilities than is seen throughout most of the wasteland and fosters great ingenuity among the people. Raising a Regina. Oh god. Our revolt against the Kingdom of Manitoba was successful, but for the cultural identity of the Metis, it was a pyrrhic victory. During the city's prolonged unrest on the eve of our uprising, the Kingdom's Regina garrison was desperate to buy time for reinforcements from the east. Their efforts were ultimately futile, but by burning many of the Regina's libraries, they destroyed many valuable and crucial books on the chief, the language of the heart of our culture which has struggled for survival over centuries. This attack on our heritage remains fresh in the minds of our people, and has substantially damaged their will to serve in any further armed conflict, righteous or otherwise. Oh god, that's terrible. We do get Ohm's Law done. Oh, wait. Well, maybe not. Wait, where's Ohm's Law? Well, we can't go down that way anyway, so... 
I guess it doesn't even matter. Yeah, I thought we, we could bounce it out different way. The Second Coalition. Eloy Steel, the Third Republic, or Three Rivers, wishes to finally end their long-standing conflict between the Kingdom of Manitoba and the nations formerly under its control. To this end, they've called upon the peoples of Manitoba together to form a coalition to take down the king, having dubbed it the Second Coalition, in the spirit of the original war for the First Republican Coalition. Who shall prevail this time? Interesting. Anyone here unique? Hopefully. Anyone here for political power? Friends in high places? We are elites. What do you like? Tie the voting age to a draft. Yay. Construction speed, yes please. Um, increased congressional guards. The constitutionals have proven that they cannot act in a cordial matter during the simple civil debate. Guards must not be employed from loyal military regiments, of course, to ensure the continuation of our valued democratic institutions. All right. Uh, grease of uh, politicians' wheels. The slimy grease balls of no agenda or alliance, making their voices easily silenced with just a fraction of the nation's treasury. Oh, paying them off. It's not bad. It's pretty good. Allow weapons in Congress. Ooh. Following a brief panic, a new edict was passed along guards and congressmen to brandish Personal defense weapons on the congressional floor. Luckily, it seems most of our representatives are taking advantage of lessened restriction. So, what's the difference? Point one, more political power and stability. We get better surrender limit. Uh, honestly, I don't want to lose stability and guns. I'd rather do this one. Because this one hurts us with stability. I don't like that. Even though this seems really cool. You know what? We're going to do this one anyways because it seems really cool. Is that the route we should really take? Probably not. But, you know what? If we could bring guns in and do our whatever we want to do... That sounds awesome. Also, do we have a trade node at all anywhere here? I don't think so. We're part of the Brandon trade node, which we don't under own, unfortunately. Oh, but do we have Regina? Oh, we do. No, go and put Monthan on. That's fine. Hey, at least we have a node. That's good. Uh, Eton de Mons? De Mons? I don't remember very much of my French. I went to get in high school, so. Oh, you're a robotics expert. Yeah. Go with this. Maybe we should have done robotics instead, perhaps? I don't know. We're toying with the robotics here, but diminished fur yields. With the migration of many species following temperature drops or Canada in the Great War's aftermath, the harmful effects of radiation have left their mark in many war ways, but perhaps most adversely affected were the metas. For as many trappers and hunters soon discovered, beavers and many other mammals exhibited far lower uh, a sparser growth of the pelts on which the fur trade relied. Given the resurgence of the industry experienced in Saskatchewan, the trade provided many in an escape from the poverty that struck central Canadian cities at the start of the American occupation. This ecological change dealt a blow to our economy. This was only worse than under the kingdom's rule. As the nobles infringed upon what little right to self-governance we had to ensure a steady supply for the eastern cities, our ability to adapt and develop alternative industries was severely stifled. Freedom from our previous subjugation has finally provided us with the opportunity to rectify this, but the cultural significance that the trade now bears makes abandoning these occupations of the past an overwhelmingly unpopular idea. Should we find a path to improve the situation, though, the profits it could bring would be worth all the economic downturn we endured, and then some. Warmonger, anything here unique? Not too much, but friends in high places. Sure. We're gonna need divisions. We're gonna need guns. We're gonna need a lot of things. We're very needy people. Um, I don't know. I just... Uh, we seem pretty average, so I'm going to go with conventional, which is conventional. It's not great, but it's just conventional. Uh, do we need... We lose manpower, but you know what? Let's go and employ more. I don't want to lose any more than we already have. There you go, too. Citizenship for soldiers. By restricting total citizenship to only members and ex-members of the military, we can solidify our control and ensure our country is run by the courageous. Way more political power, recruitable population, nice. Add farmer shortage, which is not ideal. Worker shortage, which is also not ideal either. Not good. Construction basics, that's fine. Go into that one too. Um, we can't do any of that stuff because it's all ahead of time. Robots, Ooh, you know what, that's still ahead of time too. That one's done. there you go. No map, but what else is new? The power of president. Only the president can be trusted to steer the military to victory. This has been proven both recent and historical battles. Hail to the chief! Checked and balances. While we are unable to prevent the army's rise of power, we can limit the control over our institutions through po shrewd political skirmishing. Choosing our national heroes. Stability would be nice. Put the power, division recovery, race starting level, new generals. You lose population, you bet get consumer better goods. Choosing our national heroes. Our long historic past gives us many tales of part upon the younger generations that have never known the struggles of medicine once endured. But who will be our symbol of hope? The persistent Louis Aurel or the outrageous Gabriel Dumont? Who knows? I don't. Maybe I do. Maybe I lie, and I do. 
If you want to about Dave Infamy, please go ahead. I've read it before. Constitutionalist bickering. Nice. So who's this Antoine guy? The liberation of a nation is something that calls upon all its peoples, women and children included. But revolutions aren't easy, and the prices that call upon the right fighters are heavy. Antoine never dreamed to rebel. In the mud and slums of Virginia, he dreamed to be remembered. To have the struggles of his and his friends' lives lived through the ages. He read books about great people, generals, and administrators. So when his people cried and began to organize, he was there. When a boy was harassed by a police officer, he got a gang and stones and taught them that laws were only what you allowed yourself to be governed by. To struggle was to live, and to live was to be remembered. He gained word of a group looking to fight against the people who stepped on them, and so he joined. As a mail carrier person, then with his best friend, soon he learned that the group he signed up was with was shying away from violence. So he would lead segments in the Boy Scouts into conflict with the police, causing his promotion away from the front lines. During his time, his brother, Etienne, would be called into the Three Rivers to connect with merchant resistance fighters. This loose in the lease on Antoine as he no longer had a pacifist a voice on his shoulder. Um, now he flagrantly violated his unofficial demotion, began leading once more the militant members. Antoine began to hear rumors that his fellow resistance leaders had been fighting or had been selling him out to the police, leading to a firefight and nuclear explosion of his fusion fleet. An explosion that would rip his arm from his body, though his comrades would get, win the battle and save him, the fight was not over. With a new arm from his absent brother, Antoine was set about completely ousting the members who wished to come find common ground with their oppressors. In this endeavor, he was successful, waiting excitedly for his brother to return and see the work he completed. But when Etienne returned, it wasn't eagerness that greeted him, but rather cold jealousy child, and so he assigned to Etant a position that would ensure neither would rub shoulders until the situation could be smoothed over. Without either side seeking the resolutions, the distance between the two only grew. Huh. From friends to colleagues to rivals, the men slowly drifted apart and became surrounded by whispers that profited the rivalry. Antoine marched on the kingdom. With a staggering sting of, string of victories, his campaign only ended after being crushed by Yorkton. His victories would carry him into position of leadership upon the formation of the Congress. Although his inability to secure the final victory would haunt him through each of his presidencies. Now, he seeks rearmament and societal reorganization to prepare for his greatest and last campaign. We got a violent person here. It's fine, whatever. It is what it is. Um... Happy August! Well, good to get some backs around. Interesting. Oh, do we have, what do we have here? Oh, Manifest. That's not bad. Oh, we got some Army XP, right? Conventional, I guess. I mean, what else would we choose here? There you go. Negative political power. Pretty normal for us. Those are sending bonuses. Um, Yes, please. We are completely out of manpower, so... Teachings of Louis Real. Open borders. Open definition. I like the compliance gain. That's very strong. And more stability. And legacy. More political power. And weekly map art goes up by 13, which is can be very strong. Weekly map art goes up to 18 versus the actions here. Close definition. Foundations of a given civilization. Arms workshops. Never another massacre. Decisions. Forged in fire. End the assimilation. Revoke the Manitoba Act. I just don't know. Exploitation for the frontier. Other oh, frontier. Sway the southern. Cores all states by the unbound, which is a free core, which I do like a lot. Congress of Manitoba versus revoke these guys. The Red River Republic. Pretty simple and easy to make these divisions. Um, we got all those done, which is actually really nice. So ahead of time, work is needed. Uh, construction, yes please. Barrage balloons, payload gliders, and this one. Which we're not gonna use this one, or this one. There you go. I personally would like more stability. That would be great if we could get that. But if we can't, then we cannot. Um, I'm tempted to go this way. You get more compliance, which is fantastic. I might just go this way. Oh, prepare for the storm. Ooh. Army XP, what is this one? Spec Ops Divisions, that's nice. Initiative, Conference of Equipment Output, Interwoven Support, what is that? Modern Day Voyagers, that's pretty good too. Regina, Air Base, Biplane Fighters, 8th Generation, Air Adoption Cost goes down, Production Cost goes down, Firepower of the Old World, Artillery, ooh, that'd be good too. Congress of Peoples, well, we're definitely not going that way now. Can we go up here? The essence of culture and endangered language. Modernize our stance. Choose federal federal intervention. Fruits of our labor. Hey, that'd be pretty good to do. Mm. Division recovery of our people. 
population. I don't want to lose any of this stuff, really. I might do that. I want to see this stuff last. Um, here, you gotta do that one, too. We make divisions extremely quickly. Lord of War. Uh, let's go with... Burning Force Raid. That'd be nice. Essence of Culture. From the trials of colonization to American occupation, the chief language endured, but the books burning that the kingdom had conducted during their own campaign to eradicate it dealt a serious blow. And so up in a flames more than a few remaining records of the language that anchored our national identity. With enough investment, collective knowledge of the chief could be restored, but at an unforgiving waste we must assess just how large of a price we're willing to pay. Interesting. Um, I always like the Golden Gecko. We're going to get it up. Caravan guards, local sheriff... Frontline operatives, pretty normal. Unique, bring your civilization. Nothing super unique. Linguistic revival. You're bringing your people's back. Remove raising of Regina. That'd be good to do. Versus the one, safeguard history. Removing raising of Regina. Forward thinking. Broad literacy reforms, multiculturalism, appeal to the youth, funded militias, ghoul re recruitment. Um, so over here, civilian reimbursement. I guess not bad. Pass the Mar Morin Act. Nationalized schooling. I like that. Release former noble properties. So we're going down this way. This one seems like we're really here for um, including everybody. Congress of Peoples. It's very multicultural down here. Safeguarded history. Forward thinking. Linguistic revival. Well, this seems like this would be great for this route. People, Congress of Peoples and the Last Vestige of Democracy is all right. It's not bad. I'm thinking that it sounds like we should probably go not modernize our stance. We want to federalize it and have a linguistic revival. We have a proud people. We can become a proud people while still doing this side here, too. Because eventually, Congress of Manitoba, and this focuses just on us. So I'm thinking we'll go down and federalize the revitalization. So as much as I want, as much fun as this one is, I honestly think this is better overall. Yeah, you lose consumer goods factors, but get more political power, which we need. The preservation of Michif is not enough. It's paramount to our people's pride that the language is not just survive, but be revived to the point of ubiquity and met as common life. Federally sponsoring such an initiative, with well, success of that of our government, position in the matter of Michif as imperative above other budgetary and policy concerns and endangered language. Perhaps the characteristic most emblematic of all the metas is our language. The chief includes multiple distinct dialects, all of which entail a combination of Korean and French, while each parallel their mixed uh, ancestry. Over the 20th and uh, 19th centuries, the Machief faced a serious decline due to settler colonialism in Canada, with uh, speakers in amounts as low as triple digits. Surprisingly, this course was averted in part due to the otherwise detrimental American occupation of Canada. Faced with harsh rule and the constant threat of informants, Metis Congress, Metis resistance fighters adopted in Michif, particularly forms that borrowed more heavily from Cree than French as a means of secure communication. This effectiveness of the strategy, coupled with greater isolation due to strict rules and travel, led Michif literacy skyrocketing before the Great War and enduring thereafter. That is until the Kingdom of Manitoba, with the benefit of hindsight on American occupation's failures, saw, to fit, saw fit to eradicate Michif. Manitoba strictly enforced the outlawing of languages the Crown did not officially recognize. Over decades of uh, this policy, literacy rates dropped dangerously low once again. This reached a boiling point when, at the onset of a rebellion, Manitoba set aflame Regina's libraries and records within. This barbaric act made our victory a much less joyful one and diminished people's appetite for further conflict. But with Manitoba on the brink once again, it seems we have little choice in the matter. The community and government leaders must decide on a new course forward to protect the chief and her culture broadly. Reformers argue that historical preservation for future efforts is the most pragmatic approach given the attention foreign threats demand. Meanwhile, others assert that a costume endeavor which fully restores the chief's prominence and instills a strong national identity in the population will create a much stronger people. Local initiatives? Federal involvement is the only way forward. Look at that peepee. -pee. So that's good. Um, anyway, else, you know what? We're going to use political power with the entire campaign. Person in the community is probably the way I would like to go. Worker shortage. Oh, God. Farmer shortage. Incentivize pop service. We encourage our fighting age men to enlist throughout the businesses or through bonuses. If they still do not sign up, they are conscripted into undesired positions as cooks and genders with a reduced pay. Sounds about right. Sounds right to me. Good, good, good. How many guns are we lacking? Average equipment and spec ops. You know what? We've got money. Buy the guns. What are we producing that we don't use? Support equipment? Good. We're going to need a lot of that. 
Uh, more political power too would be fantastic, but we gotta get ready to go to war, right? Because I do want to go to war fast. Um, as much as I'd like to do this one, I think we'll probably do the teachings of Louis Riel. An esteemed politician and diplomat, Louis Riel was a symbol of hope for a people who formed the first national committee that fought for our rights in the Red River Resistance. Riel tirelessly sought proper treatment of our people, but was ultimately executed following a political circus of a trial. Despite this, we still carry his ideals much farther than any non-indigenous Canadian has carried theirs. The Wayson makes metis of all of us. Forging the fires of history. We're going to go with this route just because we want to bring back the chief and our people and... We're open to having more of our people. Well, this is fun and all, but still. Federalize it. Good. We research pretty fast, which I do like, too. It's pretty nice. Um, outsider volunteers. Economic advisors, perhaps? Infrastructure civvy stuff? Um, more production costs, more soft attacks. Seems pretty nice, too. Um, on a speaker, non-core manpower. Just about world goals towns is pretty nice. Monthly population and recruitable population factor. Let's help us out with the war stuff, which we don't really, really need to do yet. Reconnaissance is nice. I like the organization and attack, though. Yeah, I'm going to go with organization and attack, because eventually we're going to need that. Wow. We need another general here too, but still. Start, uh, stop doing that as much. Work is needed is good. Happy February. We're going to keep doing this now, pushing on further, and I want to start making some dynamite. We're going to need some aggressive tendencies for us. And restrain on the Unbound. The Unbound to our south have skirmished with our border forces endless times. Instead of letting them sack and pillage our countryside, let's restrain the so-called unrestrainable. Rears have no place in our Congress. And a plea of sincerity. Moose Jaw is a peaceful place, even to a fault. Both peace can only get them so far on the resurgent battlegrounds of Canada. Antoine must make his case through the effort and his people to join the Congress as an equal. We must not and cannot allow the innocents of the land to be ruled by the electorate or the encroaching stampede. Good refugees, daily compliance is fantastic. Lose stability, but you get more stuff here. I like more weekly manpower, and the faster you get this, the more you can use it. So, uh, Open our borders. For too long, we have kept our borders closed to outsiders. If we truly want to carry on the memory of real, we must be more accepting to our neighbors. To prove we're not hypocrites, we must treat them as fairly as we treat our own people. This may cause tension amongst hardliners, but it's for the greater good of the Congress. And like I see the medicine line. The Canada-U.S. border alongside the 49th parallel, or as we know it, the medicine line, split hundreds of families from their loved ones so it once began to be enforced. The line was an arbitrary border that split our peoples into and led to the rights of our tribes being ignored. Let's reunite with some of the tribes south of the line to find kinship once more. Look at that, BB. Crap. Uh, should not have chosen that. Spell the riffraff. Crud. Current opinion is negative five, negative five. God dang it. Negative five. Oh, well then. We're kind of screwed then with that. Funded militias. Wow, that's extremely expensive. Mischief restoration efforts. I guess that makes sense. Holy crap, I should have not chosen that one earlier. Oh, well. Fly boy. It's pretty normal. Um, Sergeant. I like the soft attack. Local leaders? Honestly? I want to jump here already. Um, expansive definition of Metis. Over the centuries, the true identity of the Metis has been heavily questioned by cynics, both of them without. What truly does it mean to be one of us? Perhaps we should act more tolerant towards all who share ancestors and legacy? That's yeah, not bad. Ratify the Fl Flamand program. Ooh, more political power and weekly stability. I like that. Renack legal protections. Under the kingdom, puppets of the nobles pushed a great amount of laws and rhetoric hostile to the interests of the flourishing met chief. Repealing their legislation was once uh, the very first actions that Congress ever took, but adults who remember these crackdowns still fear using the language publicly. In order to restore the confidence, we must make the ex their explicit right, or explicit legal right, to do so. And here we are. Hopefully, these guys don't have too many people here with the unbound, but we do have an opportunity to strike in there and have a good old time ourselves. Hopefully. Oh, or they all attack us too. Um, well, alright. 
where you have no political power, but that also means I did get to Military Academy Officers, something I never, ever, ever get to in the very first episode. Um, but it just seemed like it should be right. And Sco Scooby? Is that Scooby? Battle plans? Yes. Scooby, 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 Scooby. So we are doing Circle and Destroy. Hopefully that'll work out for us in the end, but you never know. Um, they did try to attack us a little bit, honestly. Go ahead and just go in. Uh, we're trying to research as many of these things as possible first. Let's go grab that s um, saws. That'd be nice. Spec Ops, support equipment. Ooh, just go ahead. That's fine. Um, in the meantime, uh, you're going this way, which is fine. I want you to go down here to here and literally just go to their base. You guys are doing fine here. Just do that too. Help them out. See what you can do. See what you can muster up. Grab some new crossroads. That'd be fantastic. As you are just kind of walking around. Fantastic. Less territory for them, yes, yes. Might mean more problems for us, but it's alright. We're literally only attacking just to keep them in place. So, And if we win in some places, great. If not, oh well. Very good. And we got them. There you go. A nice, easy, little fast war. State of Moose Jaw. I hope they decline because I do want to go to war with them. Uh, we don't have a lot of war support, so I, and I, these guys are new generals because I hired them after we did a Military Academy Officers. Um, so we did this, read this one earlier, so read this one again, please go right ahead. Uh, exploitation of the Frontier, that'd be kind of nice. Oh, they had to be under us though. Alright, whatever. Uh, come over here, sure. Nice, this cohort, that'd be nice, do that too. Open our borders. It's a plea of sincerity is good. Anything else here? Uh, field boy? Nah, we're good. We did that one. Expansive definition of Metis, of course, which I read earlier as well. Support New World Treaties. Well, the people have come into conflict with other tribes in the past. It's wise to put our best foot forward in this desolate wasteland we occupy. Instead of shooting and picking fights with other peoples, let us embrace them with open arms and diplomacy. They will undoubtedly strengthen us all to do so. And eventually we'll get to the wasteland makes Metis of all. Caring for the ideals of our ancestors has brought us in an age of profound acceptance of prosperity. For now, though, thousands more embrace their true past and find belonging. Glory to the Congress, long live the memory of Louis Rieu, and eventually the legacy of the North American fur trade. As we come face to face with uh, well, Wasteland's hardships, uh, it's important that our sense of unity endures them. We should labor not to forget the lessons of our people's history. Absolutely. Hey, another vision. Hey. Fantastic. Let's see what happens next. We still have a lot of manpower, which I love, 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 love. Regina, Regina, Regina. We need to upgrade you too, Regina. That'd be nice. Do we even have an airbase here? Yes. Oh, we have one. Yeah, we're gonna keep adding to it too. Fighters. Fantastic. Ships? None yet. Yet. Make sure squad well. Automatic weaponry, and let's see what they say to us. Hopefully it's good things, not bad things. Bad things are bad. They're bad for a reason. Yes. More war support, arms workshops, and civilian workshops. Yes, please. And they say what? Oh, we get them. Look at that. They did accept. Fantastic. Resolute pacifists. We're going to have to incorporate you later on. Your apocalypse. We do have people with apocalypse as well. Um, so, it is what it is. They're fine. What are we missing here? Spec ops and motorized. Military sending bonuses, uh, yes please. 150, look up army. It's looking slightly better, but still not great. Well, that's the case. Rad hazards will go to war with later on. I guess the old believers are the next group we can get, get good to war with this. But they're allied with those guys. Um, Duchy is fighting those guys. How about Freedom's Army? Hmm. Safe Haven? You might just be cool for now. And you? That's fine. Hmm. So who else can we go to war with? Let's take a look see. So, and the assimilation. So-called Great Stampede is nothing more than an overgrown tumor which feasts on the people who conquers to further its conquest. The erasure of this culture must be put to an end before there's no, no one left to liberate versus revoke the Manitoba Act. We have the Canadians the right, give the Canadians the right to rule under threats and torture. Well, now the times come to repeal our sport and crush the Angloids in the final stronghold in the East, or West, I should say. Hard decisions, I like both. Actually, can you get this one? No, 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 okay. Great Mongols, there you go. This one? Yeah. There you go. Good. Uh, hmm. I'm going to try command reconnaissance. Uh, division defense is nice. I'll regain experience more. Uh, we're a kind of mercenary. 
open the front for the old believers it's in cores clear the riffraff Trisha of Siles and Roach Kings crush the dreams of Canada and be known as a river republic versus in the simulation sway the southern farmers unity in the face of tyranny face down the electorals which kind of like manifest rosewood a provisional government of Manitoba. I kind of like this one more. Uh, any assimilation. The so called Great Stampede is nothing more than over. I just read this one. You read this again, please go ahead. Safe Haven and the Great Stampede. I revoke the Manitoba Act. Well, even though there's more here to do, I kind of like the one on the left a little bit more. Call control and saws. Yeah. yeah they're losing here. Can we help join in, in the war? At least get some sort of tile here. We could try it. We'll see. Go and do that if we can. I'm actually. Can we actually send volunteers? Because I'd rather see them struggle and do well. Let's grab a new, uh, can we grab a new guy? No. Not ideal. And help them out. I want them to live as long as they possibly can. I have them do well. I think that'd be ideal. Yeah, that's probably for the best. Followers establish themselves, that's fine, because I want that city. Research speed, support equipment, very nice stuff. Clamp down on autonomy when we have the industry and political power for that. Should be great. Just got to be very strategic here. Because these guys aren't looking so good right now. It's actually very easy when I played as them, but whatever. Um, yeah, and the assimilation. Because safe haven... Oh, we've got to take these guys out first. Uh, these rads. So, but this is good too. Unity in the face of tyranny. By leveraging the destruction caused by outside forces, we can assimilate or gather peoples fully into our nation. And while there are by no means devils, it's better to have the ruler you know than the one you don't. Safe haven grant stampede. Oh, is this one for the rads? Uh, rad people? Old believers. Manifest hopes, freedoms. Oh. Oh, it's over here. That one was over here. Okay. Hierarchies, Radville, Airfield Restoration. Okay, so we just, you can just go straight to war with them, too. Good to know. In the meantime, you are going to be like this. You do this. Uh, you're a fast shot. There you go. Honestly. Do you have anything else here? No. Okay. You're up north. And you're getting spanked really hard. We don't want you to get spanked. So we're having to get over there as fast as you possibly can. Okay, you're not doing that. Okay, don't listen to me then. Jackson's nice. Ooh, there you go. And you get some army XP here too, which is good. As long as we take one towel, that's... Oh, that's not going to be good. Uh, what if we cancel that? You know what, we're going to cancel that. This will be a giant guy. We're going to go against these guys next. 340. Holy crap. That's a lot. What do they have here? Kingdom of Manitoba and, and Safe Haven. Safe Haven. Hmm. Really focus on the special forces for now. Capture the Warren. Alright. See what you can do. Head over there. You're still probably going to get attacked no matter what. It's alright. This guy's going to get attacked too. See what we can do. If not, if we can't do anything, that's fine. We're gonna make our own destiny. You both hold, it's fine. Learn, learn Alexander Schofield. Stampede. I mean, we, we're right here. I, mean, I don't know how strong these guys are. We don't have the strongest divisions. We got a lot of them. We're not very strong. I'll be honest, I think it's probably best just to wait to go to rad, Rads and then do it on a giant front. I think that would probably be for the best for us. Yeah. Oh, uh, we got this one next. And I'll get the weekly map or whatnot. You're learning a lot, though, which is good. Train mongrels. Helps gives us time to build up more stuff here, too. Good. 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 Build. 
Oh man, we're starting to lose here, aren't we? Not ideal. Yeah, I'll be away for that stuff too. Economic advisors. I wonder what the thing about robots is about here. This is efficiency gain. You know what? Build faster. I want you to build, 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 build. Even though we have only two cities. Spec Ops motorized. Pretty normal. And gives us time to build, get our land auction done too. Because this land auction is not great. Now. Oh, we got that one. We get all these ones. We'll get done. Um, uh, yeah, can't even do that one anyway. So we're gonna wait for all that type of stuff. Vault City. Mm -hmm. Prepare for the storm. We've always been interested in the projection of our people, even so far as taking the initiative and proactively striking dead any potential future threats. If that is left to fester, it could very easily come back to bite us, to this effort. Our training regimen requires a routine test of all soldiers, ensuring every position or every person in this army is fit to serve. Uh, weekly power. Oh, nice one. Rebuild the cultural centers. The fires of our capitals succumbed to, before our independence destroyed many of the few remaining written records for history and language, making the event a serious blow to national pride. Any efforts to restore the security of the language must first restore these buildings and bolster their organizations dedicated to their operation. Oh, absolutely. Yes, yeah, it'd be really good to get to. I want to do this one next, but we're not going to. We're going to do this one next. I want to read about our heritage. Go ahead. Look at my efforts looking decent. You are learning as much as you possibly can. But it's not enough more. Oh, we have a dockyard. Nice. Uh, do that one first. Goodbye. Goodbye. One, please, only. Fantastic. Oh, and before we do that, we're going to do this too. Just in case. You are going to come here and spin yourself around. Get more army XP. Learn, learn, learn. Do some of that. Followers aid, not bad. We could buy more things if we needed to, but we're probably not going to. Caps income, that's not bad. Old world infrastructure, resource efficiency gain, more money, please. I'm a big sucker for money. Lots and lots of money, please. Especially to prepare to go to war. But the strength of our heritage would be very interesting to read. In the meantime... <clears throat> Grab someone else. Another field commander? Yes, please. The strength of our heritage. Michael Cook, huh? Oh. Special Forces Supply Grace. You know what? That seems pretty good. Boop. 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 Our people's mixed ancestry originated in the, the 17th century when French merchants seeking to strengthen the fur trade came into contact with various, various indigenous tribes. Although the European colonization of Canada was not free from strife for many indigenous people, these trappers and tribes developed mutual respect as they built a robust network of settlements and trading posts across the continent. This was concurrent with unions made between French settler men and indigenous, indigenous women. These common law marriages were known as marriage à la façon du passe, according to the custom of the country, due to the mixed European indigenous tradition, and they formed the firm backbone of the entire fur trade. Although trading companies first opposed this, indigenous peoples and European settlers both encouraged it, as the economic ties created by these intermarriages led to a stable, prosperous exchange. The two formed a deep symbiotic relationship as the men orchestrated the trade and barter for European goods. Indigenous women led their boats down the rivers, taught them to use the land's resources, prepared swaths of essential tools, cured food for expeditions, and helped manufacture the canoes. It was these unions, spurred on by pragmatism and strong social bonds, that brought with them the ethogenesis of the Metis. And though the landscape of North America changed over centuries, our vital role in the trade continued, and our efforts to bridge cultural gaps persisted even as conflict arose. We come from a lineage of skilled hunters and trappers, but also of negotiators, both traders and diplomats. These traits have formed the backbone of a culture have guided us in weathering many storms, from hostile governments in the, of the past to the anarchic wasteland of the present, but with neighbors east and west that threaten to destabilize Canada once more, we must rely on them further to secure the safety and well-being of not just our people, but all free people of the North. Indeed. Nice. This stuff seems all very good to get. Robots hunters. Oh, more population. That'd be good, too. Experience gain. I like this a lot. Expert navigators. Oh, that's good. Uh, ratify the Flamand program. I do want to get down here, though, and rush through it. With the language revival campaign underway, the Congress has begun deliberating on our lack of formal schooling nationally. Advocates for the restoration of public education have come forth with a proposal for funding its restoration. Dead the Flamand Project, after the family renowned for their advocacy for a chief, its current curriculum, what a position teaching in the sake of the language as a central tenant in education. But if you enjoyed our first episode playing as the Metis Congress, please consider leaving a fat like Arino. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we will go to war with our rad hazards and probably save Haven, if not at least the Great Stampede. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous rest of your day.